us a huge pleasure to welcome my good friend Jens Stoltenberg, NATO Secretary General, along with the permanent and military representatives of NATO to Faslane, the first visit for 27 years. Faslane, the home of our nuclear deterrent. Today also marks the 350th patrol and an opportunity for us and NATO to reflect on the state-of-the-art capability that has kept us safe for almost 50 years. Secretary General and I have just toured HMS Vengeance, one of our four nuclear submarines that carries the deterrent. We've uh, talked to about how the United Kingdom is now building four Dreadnought-class submarines and investing hundreds of millions to transform this base on the Clyde into the Royal Navy's Submarine Centre of Specialisation, protecting our people and our partners far into the future. But the main reason for this visit today is to make a threefold commitment. First, to nuclear deterrence. We remain firmly committed in NATO to a world without nuclear weapons. I have reduced the number of deployed warheads on each of our submarines from 48 to 40, and the number of operational available warheads to more, no more than 120. We remain committed to reducing our stockpile, but we also have to be realistic. These weapons remain vital for the security of our people and of our NATO partners for as long as the security environment demands. NATO is a nuclear alliance, and our deterrent provides one of the alliance's key centers of decision-making, complicating the calculations of our adversaries, and many nations represented here today signed the non-proliferation treaty in the late 1960s in the knowledge that they were covered by our nuclear umbrella. Today, the nuclear dangers are intensified. From a reckless North Korea, an increasingly aggressive Russia, nuclear weapons remain the only credible way to deter the most extreme <coughs> dangers, reminding any aggressor that the benefits of an attack will be vastly outweighed by the consequences. Second, we recommit today not just to deterrence, but to Euro-Atlantic security as a whole. As the United Kingdom leaves the European Union, we remain determined to defend our continent. Britain is the biggest defence spender in Europe and the largest European provider of NATO defence capabilities. Our forces are currently supporting the Alliance by policing the skies over the Black Sea by leading half NATO's maritime missions. And as we meet today, our Prime Minister has been meeting our battle group British troops in Estonia that provide reassurance to our Eastern European allies. That's what we're doing today, but we are determined to build on this cooperation for tomorrow, using our best military assets to contribute to common security and defence policy cooperating with the rest of Europe on foreign sanctions and strengthening the links between our defence companies and those of Europe. Finally, we are committed to ensuring that the Alliance remains ready for the unexpected. We've already seen NATO adapting its deterrence and defence posture. Now we have to make good on the Warsaw Summit promises, becoming faster more agile and more efficient, finding new ways to tackle evolving threats from cyber to hybrid. The United Kingdom is determined to continue leading from the front, encouraging NATO to take a 360 degree view of the dangers. And there is no greater illustration of that determination than the fact that the new chairman of NATO's military committee will be our very own Chief of Defence Staff, Air Chief Marshal Sir Stuart Peach. So, let me conclude by saying as we head 
towards next year's NATO summit. We have uh, a full agenda, but one message should resound from here on the cloud, that whatever the challenges to come, our nations remain united and ever more determined to strengthen the world's greatest alliance, to defend our security and our prosperity, and to uphold the values that we share. Thank you. Thank you much, so much, uh, Sir Michael, and, uh, and uh, Michael, thank you for our cooperation and thank you for our friendship and, uh, and thank you also for hosting the North Atlantic Council and uh, the NATO Military Committee here at uh, Fastlane uh, today. Um, coming from sunny Norway, I feel very much at home uh, in Scotland and uh, it has uh, really been a great privilege uh, to uh, visit uh, HMS Vengeance uh, today. One of uh, the Royal Navy's four Vanguard class submarines. These are among uh, the most complex and impressive capabilities uh, of uh, NATO, providing continuous uh, at sea deterrence for almost 50 years. Even more impressive are the highly trained personnel uh, who crew and support these submarines and we met some of them uh, during our visit today. And they help to ensure that our nuclear deterrent remains safe, secure and effective. I was really delighted uh, by uh, uh, or delighted to meet uh, many of the crew uh, members today. And I want to take this opportunity to thank them for their dedication and for their professionalism. They serve with distinction and courage, often under very challenging uh, conditions. Away from families and friends for long periods of time. All members of our alliance uh, owe them a deep depth of gratitude. In an uncertain world, uh, nuclear deterrence remains critical uh, to our security. At the same time, NATO remains committed to creating the conditions for a world without nuclear weapons, in line with our commitment to the Non-Proliferation uh, Treaty. And our track record uh, is strong. Since the end of the Cold War, Allies have reduced the number of nuclear weapons dramatically. But as long as nuclear weapons exist, NATO will remain a nuclear alliance. So, therefore, I very much welcome the contribution made by the United Kingdom's nuclear deterrent to the security of the alliance. And I also welcome the decision to maintain this capability by building a new class of ballistic missiles submarines. This is but one of UK's many contributions to the Alliance. You continue to show uh, leadership in implementing NATO's 2% guideline uh, defence spending. You serve as the lead nation for our battle group in Estonia. We are also leading NATO's very high readiness force this year. In the Middle East, you play a key role in the battle to defeat ISIS and you are a major contributor to NATO's training and exercises. Here in Faceland, you are currently supporting two important naval exercises, Joint Warrior and Formidable, Formidable, Formidable Shield, which involve aircraft and naval units from across the Alliance. And indeed, HMS uh, Somerset, taking part in exercise Joint Warriors, he is here today. In these challenging times, the UK's contributions to NATO are as important as ever to help to deter any potential adversary and in doing so you help to safeguard the security of NATO's uh, nearly 1 billion citizens. Your role in preserving the peace in Europe is indispensable and NATO allies are very grateful for the UK contribution. Thank you, Jens. And I'll take some questions. Uh, Ali Bunkel from Sky Television. Um, one to each of you, if that's okay. Secretary of State first. Um, given, sorry, I'll speak up. Given uh, NATO's principles of collective defence, 
were North Korea to attack America, would you pledge our nuclear deterrent in support of the United States? And uh, Secretary General, on that sort of same theme, H.R. McMaster recently said that they had drawn up plans to show the President for a possible preventative strike. Would NATO support the United States if they decided that a preventative strike against North Korea was their only option? Well, if I can try the first one and then Jens come in on the second. It's hypothetical to speculate on what kind of uh, assistance the United States might want from its allies in any particular situation. We're working hard with the administration uh, to use every diplomatic channel to bring this uh, dangerous, provocative and illegal testing program to a halt. Uh, we work uh, with uh, the United States in tightening enforcement of existing resolutions to ensure that the new resolution is uh, properly implemented and we're, we are working too with our European partners to see what further sanctions can be implied within the uh, European Union and to bring further pressure on uh, China to deal with its, uh, its neighbour. We continue to work for a peaceful, political, negotiated solution to the crisis uh, in Korea and uh, we continue to strongly condemn the testing, the, the development of missiles and nuclear uh, weapons. At the same time, every nation has the right to defend itself. And of course, also the United States has the right to defend itself against attacks. And NATO is there uh, to defend uh, all allies. And, uh, and uh, uh, that's part of self-defense, which is in her, uh, part of also the UN uh, Charter. Um, we will uh, continue to work for maximum pressure on uh, North Korea uh, to create the conditions for a negotiated uh, solution. We call on North Korea to abandon uh, its uh, missile programs and uh, nuclear programs and we support uh, the uh, efforts uh, uh, to step up uh, the pressure on uh, Korea, including with uh, economic uh, sanctions. Thank you. Now, a, a blue tie is always the way to get called first. <laughs> so, Michael, thank you, Andrew Kerr, BBC Scotland. Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister of Scotland, reaffirmed her commitment yesterday to wanting nuclear weapons out of Scotland. If Scotland became an independent country, what would that mean for the UK's nuclear deterrent? And to the Secretary General as well, please. Well, first, um, as I understand, the, the SNP position seems very confused now. They want to join NATO. NATO is a nuclear alliance. And uh, our nuclear forces, the French nuclear forces and the American nuclear forces are part of NATO's nuclear alliance. So the SNP need to sort out uh, where they really think. The nuclear deterrent here today keeps Britain safe. It keeps NATO safe as well. And Scotland is part of that. The nuclear deterrent uh, is uh, essential for NATO's deterrent and uh, that makes us all safe and the reason to have strong deterrence uh, is to uh, prevent war, is to avoid conflict and is to send a clear message to any potential adversary that an attack on NATO uh, will trigger uh, a response from the whole alliance and, uh, and the cost will be much higher than the benefit. So, that helps make the UK uh, uh, safer, but also uh, all NATO allies uh, safer. Now, moving along. Yes, sir. Um, I wonder, uh, Julian Barnes, Wall Street Journal, uh, to uh, the Defense Secretary, um, uh, Russia uh, tested uh, a ICBM as at the end of uh, the Sapad exercise. There were their strategic subs were part of that. Um, uh, is is it time for NATO to integrate nuclear aspects into its conventional uh, uh, exercise? And to the Secretary General, do the, does the, the sort of nuclear aspect of Zapad make this event today more important for NATO to emphasize its nuclear deterrent in the face of Russian tests and also North Korean tests? We have always been very clear that we distinguish between uh, our nuclear capabilities and our con con conventional capabilities. At the same time, we are exercising both, of course, our con conventional weapons and systems and capabilities and our nuclear uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, uh, we have responded to a more assertive Russia 
We have seen that over many years. They are exercising their forces, they are exercising their nuclear forces, they are invested heavily in upgrading both the conventional forces and the nuclear forces. And we have responded to that in many different ways, not least by increasing our presence in the eastern part of the alliance with the battle groups, uh, one of them led by uh, uh, the UK. But we are not matching uh, 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 soldier by soldier or tank by tank or plane by plane or nuclear capability by nuclear capability what the Russians are doing. We are responding in our way and, uh, and, uh, and we make sure that we continue to have strong and uh, reliable defense and uh, deterrence. I have not much more to add to that. I mean, we, uh, we're part of NATO's uh, conventional deterrence. Those are the troops that the Prime Minister is inspecting uh, this, moment, this morning. But we're also part of strategic deterrence as well. And uh, you know, the, the best answer of all to Russia is that we are renewing our deterrent. We have set aside uh, um, a, a very large uh, program to renew the four uh, Trident boats by the dreadnoughts that we're constructing now. Larissa, Daily Mail. Uh, Secretary of State, are UK defence planners currently um, preparing militarily for a war with North Korea? And if the US did uh, attack North Korea, would the UK be ready to stand, stand in and help? Uh, and Secretary General, would NATO invoke Article 5 if North Korea uh, struck the island of Guam with missiles? Thank you. Well, on the first, of course, we're working very closely with the United States on the all the diplomatic pressure that is needed now to bring this illegal testing program to a halt. And I've described the various channels that we're uh, exercising at the moment uh, with the United Nations, uh, with our partners and inside the, the European Union. We have to exhaust every conceivable diplomatic channel before we uh, start uh, considering uh, any kind of uh, military action. So NATO is there to defend all allies based on the principle one for all and all for one. And we have to remember that the only time NATO has invoked our Article 5 was after an attack on the United States, 9-11-2001. Having said that, I think I will only add to uncertainty if I start to speculate uh, about uh, how we will react uh, to many different hypothetical uh, uh, situations. We are there, uh, uh, we, we monitor the situation very closely. Uh, but I will not start to speculate exactly how we will react to different uh, possible uh, uh, situations. Now we have time for one more. Debbie Haynes. Um, uh, Debbie Haynes of Times. Um, uh, but sort of following on from Julian. Sorry. I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, following on from Julian's question about the exercises, um, during the Cold War, um, we used to have these very large scale exercises that involved politicians and um, in terms of the decision making right up to the, the nuclear uh, side of things. Um, so for, for, for Secretary of State, um, is that something that Britain is, is supporting, that idea of doing that again? And, and for the Secretary General, um, uh, NATO uh, launched this sort of review of nuclear policy. Could you just give an idea of, of how that's, what, what conclusions that, that came up with? Yeah, we, first of all, uh, we exercise our forces uh, uh, and uh, we also uh, have what we call uh, scenario-based discussions uh, among decision makers and politicians to prepare ourselves to make uh, fast and rapid uh, decisions to respond in an appropriate way to any uh, potential uh, situation. Uh, at the same time, it is important for us to convey a message that we uh, uh, are not in a new Cold War and uh, we uh, try to keep tensions down but of course we have to be ready uh, to react and to respond also through political decision making uh, if, uh, if uh, needed. Is there a second part to the question? I just want to know what the conclusion of the nuclear review was. Well, what we have done is, uh, in NATO is to uh, assess uh, um, how uh, uh, Russia has uh, changed and adapted their nuclear posture, uh, and uh, and we are constantly also then um, um, looking into how we can respond uh, in the best possible uh, way. Uh, we see that uh, NATO allies like the UK and also US are modernizing their uh, nuclear capabilities. We welcome that. So I welcome, for instance, the modernization of the uh, UK uh, submarines, which is uh, an important part of uh, NATO uh, deterrence. And the answer to the, the first part of the question is yes. Um, 
British ministers participate in these exercises. We do it uh, uh, at NATO, we also do it uh, domestically to ensure that the political decision making that is required is as effective and as rapid as the as the uh, as the deployment of, of troops has been. You will be aware of uh, Secretary Massis and I's uh, initiative to try and uh, accelerate the decision making processes to ensure that the response is as effective and as fast as it needs to be. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.